Hello, I'm Nurse Murphy. Join me in tackling the NCLEX bow tie standalone test item question. Today, our client will have acute mental status change. Bow tie understand the test writers as they created this single standalone test item were guided by the NCSPN's clinical judgment measurement model, layer three. And so what they had to do was they had to recognize cues or put in, design a test question to have you recognize cues, analyze cues, and prioritize a hypothesis. You needed to do those three steps to first start off your bow tie correctly, and that would be to put in the condition. So our client is an 86-year-old client with dementia, admitted for acute mental status change and fever of 101.7. So what is going on here? And so understand, let's go to the right panel of this test screen. You see your bow tie itself, the conditions in the center. That's what you have to do first. And then corresponding to the condition you select, you see I have some listed here in that left panel, but corresponding with that condition, you're going to take two actions and you're going to follow two parameters. So right now, we don't know which of these conditions our client would have. So what you need to do when you get an exhibit in your left panel is you need to recognize cues. You need to analyze those cues and you need to identify like that nursing diagnosis, that prioritized hypothesis, and you will put that drag and drop that condition in the center of the bow tie. And then really stick with, or absolutely stick with the condition you selected to have matching actions for that condition and matching monitors to follow as you go on. Now, a warning is needed, and that is on the warning picture when you see these different conditions here. So if it was, um, if it was a condition other than the correct one, understand, let's just pick hyponatremia as an incorrect condition. The test writers would have put at least one action on the left or one action parameter to follow, or even maybe both, just to you know, distract you or have you actually select the wrong answer because you didn't recognize enough cues and didn't analyze those cues sufficiently. So let's continue the work. So here is uh, our exhibit one. It's coming in the form of nurse's notes at 1300 hours. The client is alert. So they're awake, they're not lethargic, they're alert, but they're oriented to person only and they do follow commands. When asked to point to the pain, client touched right anterior chest, just lateral to the nipple. Uh, the pain appears to increase with cough and the client is expectorating thick tan sputum. On assessment, uh, crackles are auscultated at the fourth intercostal space, the anterior axillary region. The client failed the 90 mil, uh, milliliter water swallow challenge, sputters and coughs despite position in high bowlers. Vital signs, temperature 100.7 Fahrenheit, heart rate 90, respiratory rate 22 beats, uh, breaths per minute, blood pressure 96 over 60, pulse oximetry reads 95% on room air. Weight is 145 pounds, we have it in kilos. And the pain ad, the P-A-I-N-A-D uh, scale was used to assess for pain and it was four to six associated with cough. On intake and output, NPO, voiding clear, yellow, non-odorous quantity sufficient urine. A uh, basic metabolic panel shows the sodium 137, potassium 3.9, blood urea, nitrogen 19, creatinine 1.1, and glucose 107. All right, so when we need to recognize cues and then analyze those cues, we can then prioritize our hypothesis to select the correct condition to drag and drop in the center knot. So I'm just going to recognize some cues and analyze those cues. Well, when it comes to the condition of urinary tract infection, well, that intake and output appears within normal limits for urine. Its avoiding is clear, yellow, non-odorous, and quantity sufficient. In hyponatremia, the condition of hyponatremia, we can rule that out because sodium-137 is within normal limits. On COPD exacerbation, well, 
The saturation is 95% on room air, and our COPDs tend to be hypoxic, so that COPD is not terribly impacting uh, oxygenation right now. And then on aspiration pneumonia, well, we do have the crackles in the right middle lobe, which of course we could have with COPD as well, but um, the client also failed the water swallow challenge. Okay, so this is actually how your bowtie single standalone test item question will appear. You'll have uh, that it won't say bowtie, use your six steps, but it will tell you a bit about the client, brief snapshot, and then it will have your exhibit on the left of any kind of clinical supporting information, and then on the right will be the actual bow tie. At the top, you see the condition, action one, action two, parameter one, parameter two. And what we need to do is access the table below to drag and drop um, our answers. Now, I could show you, you know, again, I'm, I'm not an official test writer. I'm not an expert in um, uh, test, what do they call those, psychometric testing. I'm a nurse, and I want to help you to do this. Understand this table, the actions will be the same color as the action number one box, action number two box, background uh, shading, fill, color will match. Your condition, that, those, that list, they'll all be yellow, just to help you to know to drag and drop in the right columns. But I think you get the idea here. Okay, so what condition did we identify by reading our nurse's notes? We would drag that and drop it into the condition circle. Under actions, then, we would, do we want to send a urine? Do we want the client to be on a regular diet? Do we want to send a sputum? Do we want to put the patient on uh, two liters of nasal cannula? Do we want to put in a consult for the speech, speech pathologist? And then on the parameters to follow, do we want to monitor for signs of infection? Do we want to monitor hours of sleep? Do we want to continuously pulse ox monitor? Do we want to monitor lab results or do we monitor, want to continually monitor skin integrity? Again, actions are not all right or wrong, but we're always prioritizing and cl most closely linking to the condition itself. So we'll go get our answers here. Okay, so from all the exhibit information of nurses notes and knowing why the client was uh, admitted, uh, our condition is aspiration pneumonia. We drag and drop that under condition. Now the action one, well, sputum analysis, let's collect that thick tan sputum to see if they can uh, isolate any specific bacteria that could um, ultimately give us information on how to treat this aspiration pneumonia. And also too, we just did that preliminary bedside clinical assessment of the 90 mil water swallow challenge and the client did fail that water spa, uh, swallow challenge so our next step would be to consult a speech pathologist so that they come in with that bedside fiber optic and the different thicknesses of, um, of uh, liquids and food consistencies to see if with each swallow do they aspirate into their lungs and then the parameters to follow we're always looking so say if somebody were to aspirate, now you and I aspirate our saliva in our sleep at night, and we do not get aspiration pneumonia. But if somebody were to aspirate, especially food items that can then um, be a wonderful source of bacteria to feed bacteria, then we would follow signs of infection. Um, and then uh, results of lab tests, we really want to know if that um, sputum can isolate a specific bacteria within that and also to, um, uh, is there a, a perfect antibiotic to treat the current um, um, aspiration pneumonia? Chanel's ultimately for aspiration pneumonias. I'm trying to find a way to look at you and, and read my slide. All right, aspiration pneumonia, admission information within the nurse's note. That was really quite helpful. I understand the test writers are seeking to determine if you can recognize cues, uh, sure, dementia, point, and so by, by a patient with dementia, they might not be as verbally expressive and descriptive in detail on what they're experiencing as signs and symptoms, but we ask the client to point to where it hurts. 
And we also use that specific um, pain assessment scale, the pain AAD, which really has you uh, going through a series of steps to more closely assess for discomforts related to someone with dementia. So those were your recognized cues and analyze why those would be. So when we recognize cues here, I said point to the site of pain, what that means, and the pain uh, AD, uh, oh, we recognize they had use that for pain, and then analyze, oh, that's something you would use in a setting of dementia because they are not very expressive in their signs and symptom description details. And then we have our physical assessment of auscultation of crackles at the site of discomfort. Um, the expectoration of sputum does not appear the normal thin, clear uh, sputum that you and I, if we were to just you know, have a normal cough. Now that 90 mil water swallow challenge is a clinically useful screening test. You know, the sensitivity and specificity um, as it's done correctly and more nurses know how to do it, I anticipate those uh, sensitivities and specificity scores will increase. But they are a uh, clinically useful uh, screening test at this time to assess for aspiration risk. The client failed and is at high risk for aspiration of fluids and fluids, fluids and foods and medications and applesauce, right, into the lungs. Obtain the consult for the speech pathologist to investigate further. We monitor for fever and we monitor laboratory results. We're going to maintain NPO until the um, speech pathologist continues that investigation. Now those other conditions, I don't wanna ignore them because I want you to understand, I want you to see them as worms on the hook that a fish could bite, all right? So the conditions did not have supporting information within the nurse's notes exhibit. However, the, when there's conditions, the test writers do put in corresponding actions and uh, parameters to follow up. So um, understand too, along those lines, you are able to move uh, test answer drag and drops in and out until you submit your answer. But ultimately, I'm saying to avoid those traps. And you will have that whiteboard if you really want to map it out. And then my final suggestion is really thinking about like that concept map when you think about doing a bow tie. And if you were like, well, okay, so what is it that we are really focusing on in the setting of aspiration pneumonia? What is it that we're really focusing on in the setting of urinary tract infection? And, you know, you have to admit there possibly was a little assumption on your part when you saw older adult dementia and fever before you access that nurse's note, which is why I put it later on in the slides. Did you have UTI in your mind? Understand test writers know what we are basic assumptions. And so they might want to challenge that a little to have you de uh, delve a little deeper into the provided information so that you recognize the cues and analyze your cues before you determine that nursing diagnosis, that priority hypothesis. Okay, so I'm Nurse Murphy. I, prefer, I would like you to like and subscribe um, these submissions because if I get adequate feedback, I'll keep up with it. If I find that, I, I don't know, you know, I want to keep up with this uh, endeavor. I'm enjoying it. Okay, so make a nice day. Make a nice day. Bye-bye.